Hello everyone and welcome to the premiere webcast of Countdown to Game Day. I'm Rich McGowan, the high school sports reporter at Savannah Morning News, and I'm here to get you up to speed on everything you need to know before heading out to the stadium. Every Thursday, I'll be back here with a new show. We'll recap the events of the week before, we'll look ahead to the games coming up, and I'll have comments from the coaches from the teams playing in the game of the week. Now, it's week one, so obviously there's nothing to recap from last week, so let's get right into the games that are coming up. First up is the Thursday night game between Benedictine and Windsor Forest. These two teams met in the Thursday night season opener last year with Benedictine winning that game 21-7 thanks to a running game that produced 262 yards. Now Benedictine returns three talented running backs in Caleb Collins, John Williams and Cam White that along with the loss of quarterback A.J. DePhillips should mean that the cadets are going to look to pound the ball on the ground once again. Windsor Forest on the other hand returns their quarterback Donovan Campbell and he's got a whole host of talented receivers to throw the ball to so look for the Knights to try to open things up a little bit more. Now both teams biggest question mark coming into the season is how are their offensive lines going to do. The team whose line gives it the better performance will likely come out on top in this one. This could be a really good way for, to open up the season in Savannah but I'm going to pick Windsor Forest to take this one 24-16. On to Friday night and let's start in Garden City. Coach Richard Redding believes his Groves Rebels are primed to contend for the playoffs, but to do so, they're going to have to win the winnable games on their schedule, and the first game of the year is one of those winnable games. The Groves welcome in Houston County, who won just one game last year, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be a pushover. The Bears return a 1,200-yard passing quarterback in Jeff Thompson and an All-State receiver in Craig Presley. Now the Rebels are a fast and athletic squad on both sides of the ball, and one player to really keep an eye on is going to be senior defensive end Donny Kutre. He's a 6'4", 250-pounder, and he runs very well. Coach Redding thinks Kutre has big-time Division I college potential, but whether or not he reaches that is going to be totally up to him. I, for one, am very interested to see how he develops this year. Now this game is tough to call, but I'm going to take Groves in 27-21. Over in Pembroke, we have a team that made the playoffs two straight years, facing a team that won only one game last year. This should be a one-sided laugher, right? Not so fast. Richmond Hill's only win last year was a 3-0 victory over rival Bryan County. In fact, the Wildcats have won only three games in the last two years, but two of those wins have come at the expense of the Redskins. Now, Bryan County comes in with all the skill, headlined by senior running back Ivy Mutchison. The Redskins' biggest questions, however, come on the offensive and defensive lines where they've lost a lot of experienced big men who opened up a lot of holes for Mutcherson. Richmond Hill's strength, on the other hand, you guessed it, is on the offensive and defensive lines. So this game's going to be won or lost in the trenches. I'm going to go with the upset in this one, and I'm taking Richmond Hill 12, Bryan County 8. Moving now to Region 3, Single A which this year is split into divisions, meaning Savannah Country Day, who may find itself in a rebuilding year in 2008, could have avoided a meeting with defending state champions Emanuel County Institute. But when it came time for coaches to draw opponents out of the hat for the cross-divisional games, guess who Savannah Country Day coach Mike Carswell picked on his first try? ECI. So that means the Hornets, minus graduated stars John Mesh, Craig Novak, Patrick Blackburn, have to face the Bulldogs who returned state touchdown champion Washon Ely. All he did last year was score 58 touchdowns. Now, Country Day could make the playoffs for the seventh straight year this year, but they just don't have enough to hang around long with the Bulldogs. I think I'm going to have to take ECI to win this one 35-14, and I may be a little conservative on that final. Now there's one game Saturday night as Savannah Christian hosts Montgomery County. Savannah Christian has been arguably Savannah's best team the last couple of seasons, but the Raiders have quite a few question marks as 2008 kicks off. Who's going to fill in the shoes left by Russell DeMassey, the senior quarterback now at Georgia Southern? Who's going to replace Tyler Sumner, reaching two AA's Player of the Year last year, also at Georgia Southern? Now the Raiders have one week to answer those questions before they go to Emanuel County Institute next week. But despite the uncertainty, the Raiders should have enough left 
to overtake Montgomery County, a team that's lost its last 28 games. Look for the Raiders to win this one, I'm going to say 34-6. And that brings us to the game of the week. Savannah High and Beach meet on the football field for the 37th time, and Savannah High leads the all-time series 19-18, but Beach has won the last 10 meetings and continued that streak last year, defeating the Blue Jackets 24-0 at Memorial Stadium. I had a chance to go out to both schools this week. I talked to the coaches about the big game and the rivalry between schools. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the, the rivalry with Savannah High, uh, what it means to, to the city, but also to Beach High. Just, uh, I mean, cause it's a, Friday night is a big night for a lot of people. Yeah, it's a big night. It's a big night for Beach. It's a big night for the community. You know, Savannah High Beach Rivalry is one of the biggest games in the state. It goes back to when I came here in 99. So, you know, we're just trying to get excited about Friday night. We're trying to get the community excited and just trying to move forward. Mm -hmm. Now, it is a region game. I made it clear that you know, we shouldn't have to play a region game first because nobody else does. But hey, you know, we're going to do it. You know, it's the card that we've been played and we're going to play with it. But we're ready to go. And uh, so talk a little bit specifically about your team. Uh, are you liking what you're seeing out here? And just uh, what are you expecting when, when the Bulldogs take the field Friday night? You know, I got I got a good group of kids. They work real hard in the off season. I've been excited about the work ethic. I've been excited about the work ethic in the weight room. I'm pleased with the, I'm pleased. I'm not satisfied with where we are, but I'm pleased with the effort. Coach, uh, just talk a little bit about uh, the rivalry and what it means to the city of Savannah and as well as Savannah High. Well, you know, anytime you mention the word rivalry, you know, there should be a lot of intensity. And um, in the past, all kids just haven't had that intensity. But, you know, after a team have beaten you for 13 straight years, I think at some point you have to have a little anger, you know, to really compete and, and win a football game. And I hope that this year, you know, we can fulfill those uh, lost 13 years that we haven't enjoyed beating Beach High School. And are you seeing that anger, that intensity in your practice? How are you feeling about your team as Friday gets closer? Well, you know, each coach would like to have a little bit more time to prepare, especially because of the weather. But um, it is what it is. You know, uh, Friday night we're going to be going up against Beach, and, um, you know, we must be ready to play. Uh, the kids have been practicing hard. Uh, all practices hadn't been going great, but, you know, we've had some bright spots. And I'm still excited about Friday night. That's it. That's the premiere webcast of Countdown to Game Day. Thanks for watching, and be sure to come back next week. For the Savannah Morning News, I'm Rich McGowan.